And I just want to say that I've never been with a group that is so advanced in accepting what we've said. <clears throat> what I'll do while we're asking questions, I'll start to lift the energy a little bit so that you can feel a bit more at home. We're ready for the juicy <laughs> yeah. Okay. Get on with it. <laughs> so there's there's a lot with um, each one of you, and I need to get a feedback just by looking around to see what is required by each one of you, and it it sets up a two way communication such that I can deliver the energies that you require. Because if I just deliver a blanket energy, it um, can disturb another person. And this is what's been happening uh, in the past. So there's been a lot of work on the other side to make sure that it's a two-way uh, situation where all your needs are met individually so the energy that comes in and around me is programmed by you so that's why I'm looking around a bit and I'll do that often and you'll feel things actually change probably most of them you'll feel just a little tingle over the top of your head and a little bit of flow that you're probably used to but in that will be nourishment that hasn't come to you before and that nourishment will allow you to build a platform for yourself for the development of new things in this world it's just like your system being able to understand what it is that's coming to it and it doesn't do it by putting it through your head it's actually a matrix that forms within each one of us that elevates our knowing and with that elevated knowing we access more of ourselves and as we do that we enter further into the world of our Creator. So the deeper and deeper and deeper we go, the more miracles we will play with. One of the things that I left out when I was talking was that little sense that each one of, them, each one of us has <coughs> that anything that's in front of us is totally mundane unless it's impossible. If it's not impossible, we're not interested. <laughs> because our whole essence is to work with miracles. Mm. And the magic of where we come from, you can feel it, you can feel it just starting. Okay. That's good. Thank you. The magic and the world of magic is something that you see in every child. Doesn't matter how small they are, you can put on fairy wings and a little dress and a wand and they know exactly what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't matter whether they're male or female, they just do it differently. But they know the magic. And you don't have to teach them because that's where we come from. And so what we're going to play with while you're asking questions is a little bit of magic. Mm. And I allow myself to actually just let go a tiny bit more each time as that signal comes backwards and forwards from your eyes. And you'll find that it's quite gradual. But there's a sense of flow that you haven't felt before. So we're open to questions, if there's any. Hmm. 
Oh, I, I was just aware uh, initially uh, in the first part, uh, the room, uh, I was aware of the room filling up with uh, lots of beings from lots of different dimensions, uh, particularly the Antarian beings uh, who bring with them this um, a very high frequency, uh, present to me as a golden light. Um, and then I was also aware of the Pleiadians, uh, uh, and then a lot of um, the earth beings, uh, the fairies and the devas and uh, the elementals, kind of all kind of, kind of stepping in, <laughs> observing and playing. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank We've got you. an audience, in other words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I haven't revealed a, a great deal about that part of our connection. Um, it's probably the first time I've been asked, actually. But each time I see someone, they recognise me, and I recognise them from various places. And I've had a situation where one gentleman actually saluted me. Yes. I see you at, I saw you as the captain. Yeah. That's why we know each other. Okay. Said, I know you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we've all been there. And in fact, we're still there. Mm. So one of the things that you are aware of is that you all are involved in the work outside this planet to maintain the correct inputs into the into the planet and to make sure that the energies that come in are clear and for the right purpose and that's why at any time you can say what are you look after that i need a certain type of energy in that area to cancel or to offset what's happening and that's why if anybody tries to do something stupid like psychic attack, you say, look, be careful because really something might happen to you. And you have no control over it except to say, whoa, 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 whoa wait. They might get over it before you actually apply that energy to them. But sometimes you have to say, go ahead. And what happens is it's a total reflection back on whoever it is of exactly what they're sending out. And you watch them. They'll turn it up and up and up and up until they self-explode. And then they're over it and it will never happen again. But it doesn't hurt them at all. And many of you know that you do that in big areas that you say, that area is in trouble, they need the right nourishment or they need the right vibration. And your fleet will actually provide that. And you notice I said your fleet. Each one of you. It's not by chance that you're all gathered here. Mm. And it's not by chance that you're on this earth. So, good question. Mm. And I hope I partially answered the question. Yeah. I just, I'm sorry. I've been on a journey for the past three years. Right. And you know, there are many of us that have come in through different means, some by accident, some by shock, some by death, all sorts. But the fact is you've come in mm. and with it you've brought to this earth not a key but a total operating 
system that put with everybody else provides harmony right throughout the universe. And so you're here for no purpose at all except you. And you've been plugged into a certain spot and told, enjoy yourself. Dive into the world and enjoy every moment. You're an honoured guest and you'll be looked after. Yeah. Um, this is on a very purely physical level. I walked fire, so I know that we can transcend anything physical. Uh, one of the things I'm experiencing a lot right now with the energies, uh, we're receiving a lot of light energy that's coming in waves and it's coming more intensely day by day, is a lot of burning in my spine and my sacrum and uncomfortableness in my physical body as we're going through whatever it is that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. Do you have any thoughts, suggestions? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's really easy to fix. Good, thank you. I'm hard to be a little more comfortable. Allow more flow. Okay. It's just like if you put fuel on a fire, it will light up and burn. But if you pour heaps of fuel on the fire, it'll put the fire out. So there's that point of, well, this is too much, so you turn the, turn the flow off. Yeah. And say, that's all I can handle. <laughs> but if you say, give me more, it'll go whoosh, and it'll shut you down. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll shut you down. And, and if you're willing to take the flow, you won't feel anything except, I can't move, I've got to lay down. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to say you touched on psychic attacks. Yep. And someone in this room witnessed something that I went through last summer. And I, it got to the point that reason wasn't going to work with this person. And I realized that I could go down to a lower vibration and I could crush this person physically, emotionally, mentally if I wanted to. And I realized that there was no point in that. No. So I pulled myself up out of it, and I turned the whole situation over, and I said, I trust that the right thing is going to happen because that's what's meant to happen. And I started manifesting things like I would ask for something, and it would be right in front, like literally right in front of me. I go, I need work gloves. There they are. I, you know, literally like every day I go, I have to be so careful because it's just coming like everything I'm asking for. And what happened was this person went through, basically was a giver enough rope situation. She's no longer in, this, in the picture. And for me, it was using a muscle, using a spiritual muscle that I had never even used before. And it really is like, the, you, if you don't use it, you lose it. And it was having a negative thing where I had to reach deeper inside myself or wherever, wherever it was coming from to push me into that new place and it was really really doing it fearlessly not having any fear because their fear and that vibration cannot exist on the same plane so i just want to say psych psychic attacks are real and if you if you find the thing in yourself the the tangent or whatever you want to call it that connects you to the source you have nothing to fear because the positivity will always cancel out the negativity yeah and the whole lot can exist at the one time. That's really the world of your creator. And the proof that everything was appearing was telling you you were there. And that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And to pass that on to everybody else is just what we're all about. And I thank you. Thank you. I mean, you thank made you. me realize it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Yep. At the same time. But not to get too intellectual about how that works, but I mean, my understanding kind of was like the palm, like your soul's here, and you have these strands of different, um, maybe your, your lifetimes or different dimensions going on at the same time. 
And um, so my question is, one, if that's fairly accurate, and two, really more it's about the awareness that we can have um, being in one of those strands or coming back up to this place of being the soul connected with those strands. Um, the awareness that um, not should we have or more like what we can access and, and how we interact with those other dimensions in, in this one. Not a, not a problem. To get it all clear, I have to actually clarify a couple of things. The first thing is entrance into the soul. The soul is a description that we brought up because we couldn't find how to describe it unless we're our multidimensional selves. And when I showed you how to be everywhere, you had no concept of soul. So let's stay at that level on the, on the explanation <coughs> and know that we don't need a name to describe where we feel or to know a, a, a name to describe where we are and who we are because the soul is an excuse to not be us. So that rattles a few theories. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> by, naming it as something, by naming it as something separate, we're yeah, all, all just in that, we're separating ourselves. Yeah, totally. The next thing is, when we're talking about being in different dimensions, I forgot to mention Tinkerbell. <laughs> <laughs> Tinkerbell sparkles are actually your connections to the multidimensional world. Mm. So if you just focus on any one sparkle and give it a bit of a fire up, you'll find they'll all go. And you are totally sitting there connected to everything and glowing. That's how you know your multidimensional connection. So nothing in this earth is missed to remind us. And Tinkerbell is the greatest reminder. The feeling of Tinkerbell is the feeling of being connected to dimensions. And the joy that's in it is so much more than what you could put in your brain. And you see, as soon as I said Tinkerbell, there's no theory. <laughs> and I think that's all I can do to help you there. <laughs> oh, oh, coming off that though, you know how we all talk about chakras and everything? You'll notice now that I've told you about our real connections that you don't need to act and and show up chakras because they're not yours they belong to the original human body that was connected into the earth in a singular line for two dimensional world not a three dimensional world and they've carried it on ever since and we do whatever we can to make them work. But as soon as you think of Tinkerbell, you're there and the rest is gone. <laughs> Tinkerbell he, berry, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, you spoke earlier about the eyes and, yeah. and the consciousness not being a part of our visual field per se. Mm -hmm. When we're moving into multidimensional awarenesses, is the physical, and again, I know it's not the eyes, but are there changes to the visual uh, field of awareness? Oh, yeah. 
so that yeah. you know maybe colors are registering or, or shapes. I, you know, I, I know intuitively I can see without yep. the eyes, but now I'm seeing things with the physical eyes yes. that are confusing. I've been to the eye doctor and everything. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well done. It's that well, that's that's a good way of spreading it around. <laughs> <laughs> It's normal. This is what's happening. And particularly visionaries will see the transparency. And it'll, it will be confusing until you get rid of the fact that you have to know. Because it's confusing. Yeah, it's no supposed to be. There's no framework. There's no reference. Yeah, because... You've run out of boxes to put it in. <laughs> okay. So enjoy it. <laughs> and keep spreading it. It's expensive, though, going to the eye doctor. <laughs> and you'll notice when you're reading a book or anything like that, it, um, as you look, <coughs> you'll see gradually things will move a little bit and that hasn't been happening before. That's why it's really important to let the story come to you or the image come to you because the, the sharpness of our vision depends on the fineness of our energy. It's changing, see? And the more we concentrate, the the more we <clears throat> we sort of fluff up our energy because clarity depends on being totally relaxed totally fine that's why they use the word fine when you're fine it's a really fine energy and it's good fun when you you hold the book up and you think, surely I don't need another set of glasses. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not what's happening. Well, now that you said that, lately when I've been reading, I've been seeing lights that have been coming in and out of like all the words, and I've been telling myself that I'm really not seeing that. That's what I've been saying. So until you just said that, I realized... I am really seeing it. Yeah. Oh. And the more we see that's strange, the more we should rejoice that we're breaking through. <laughs> as, we, as we experience more abnormality, you'll find our freedom is such that we'll be so excited that we'll go further and we'll bring some form into those things that is natural. And, and that's why I talk a lot about those who can see and those who have vision that, that is totally unique to us, <coughs> that they have to be looked after because they can see and they will transmit to us what is normal. And so the abnormality won't exist. You'll just start to move into the field that is actually made familiar by the visionaries and by the psychics. So look after them. They're totally, totally necessary. And all they've gone through in the past must be lifted off them so that their talents and their feeling of security is demonstrated. And it won't be long before all those people will be relieved of having to work because they're needed. <laughs> there was
was a time in the past where you read about the the, um, uh, the wizards and they had a position alongside the king. That is real. Because nothing can work properly without the magic. So as we move along and we start with the special miracles that we're all talking about, they'll all seem so strange until they become part of everyday life. Because a miracle is basically something out of nowhere that we've never seen before that's usually impossible. <laughs> and we've been used to having access to continuously flowing miracles. The difference between what we are used to and what we will do is that it used to be done for us. Needless to say, this time we will produce the miracles. Wow. And every one of you knows how to do that. And that's why many things are coming through that sort of seem a little bit strange. But when we're all together, it's natural. In the world at large, there's still miracles. Be aware of the fact that there is a responsibility with miracle. When a miracle happens, it must be brought into the world and maintained. And it's maintained by you never allowing it to die. It's real to you no matter what anybody says. And it will stay there. Even if they say that's rubbish. So the confidence in the fact that the miracle has happened whether the world demonstrates it or not allows us all to do what we're supposed to do. So if you fix somebody and it doesn't show in the world because of some other glitch either in the person or in the timing it is your responsibility to hold the fact that you know it's finished, it's done and if it doesn't appear in the world right now, it doesn't matter. We've reversed a lot of things ourselves because the world has shown us something different. But if I can explain it like a, uh, a tuner or an instrument, when you provide the ability for somebody to heal. You have actually changed uh, the imprint of frequencies in their being such that they can change the tuner any time they like to pick up the healing channel you've given them. And then they can play their own music and pass it on. So if they don't use it, doesn't mean it hasn't been done. <coughs> and you can force people onto the channel and they'll turn it off. <laughs> yeah. So fear is the invitation to come back into the flow? Probably. If if you live in the play world, yes. <coughs> if you live in the world of your creator, the fear is a sense. And it is so fast 
but it just feels like a whoop. and it feeds back into your being to say you're slipping away from your awareness and it is so fast that you will just pop straight back to where you were <clears throat> so that's correct also what you say but two different places yeah. two different reactions yeah. and the fear we know is there because we don't allow it to go far enough and return we hold it back and it stays there Yes. Instead of saying, I, I, I can't, yeah, go, it's okay. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yep. It's like anything you, it's like mm -hmm. any repercussion has to hit the bottom before it can. Yeah. Get out. And all the color of who we are is very intense. So, you know, you get disturbed about anything, let it go the full height. <laughs> <laughs> Even your reaction that you're not supposed to do in, in the real. It's got to react the full length so that it can come back. Ah, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that, that point of, of reaction is, is um, really important because unless you allow it to go all the way, you, have, you haven't got a chance of moving forward. Mm. That's why stuff comes up when, you know, Mm. We're moving through stuff. I mean, it comes up to clear it and yeah. Take but a if it, if it's not big enough, it will stay there as a problem. Mm. Even in even when we're in the world of the Creator, mm. if we hold back on anything, there is either a scar from you hanging onto it. Or some sort of burning. I know when I, <coughs> excuse me, when I was called on to to help someone who'd fallen through a ceiling, I put my hands on quickly on uh, just behind his back at the top and and down at the tail, and I felt this signal that there's going to be a lot of energy go through really quickly. And at that point in time, someone said something to me and I just went like that, ready to respond. And the energy came through and it burnt right across my lip. Mm. Because what was required was fairly intense energy, very quickly. And I had the signal but I suddenly got disturbed. Mm. So no matter what state you're in, if your energy is not fine enough and your whole body is not ready to conduct whatever's coming through, it will get burnt. Mm. If that happens inside you, you feel pretty uncomfortable. Mm. That's very helpful. Thank you. Does that have anything to do with fevers? Say again? Fevers? That type of heat? If you get a fever, just drive the temperature up higher. Same problem. Bigger problem. Yeah. And, it, you know, you can you, you come across people who've got malaria. Put your hands on them and drive the temperature up higher. It'll break. Yeah. Um, you're reminding me of a saying that I learned in some workshop along the way, I'm sure. Um, the bigger... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a junkie. A junkie. <laughs> Why my name is. Yeah. Um, no, but this, this has always stayed with me. The bigger the breakdown, uh -huh. the bigger the breakthrough. <clears throat> and I've, I've tried to remember that at times when things just look like it was really hitting the fan and but to remember that as big as the mess is, mm -hmm. 
the greatest good is going to come that will even maybe be bigger. That's correct. But when you move that fraction past what you're talking about, it's a little bit like squeezing a balloon. You can either squeeze it and put a lot of effort into it until it breaks, or you can stick a pin in it. <laughs> Many ways. <laughs> okay? So a really sharp movement will dissipate everything very quickly. I, I have a question about emotions and uh -huh. process of emotions in play reality versus process of emotions in creative reality. Yep. And whether um, there's some kind of difference you experience, and if you could put that into words for us. Okay, well the biggest thing that we have that we deal with all the time is not emotions, it's emotional reaction. Okay, right. Two different things. Mm -hmm. An emotion is one of those or groups of signals that we've clumped together and given them a word. Mm -hmm. So every time there's a special feedback in any part of our body or external to our body as a result of something we can put our finger on, we call it an emotion. And in fact, they are the senses that allow us to operate at a much higher level than we're operating right now. So when someone says I'm an emotional being, well, that means everything that comes into my body that I don't recognise, I react to. Okay? And then I'll give it a name called emotion. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> <at home. laughs> yeah. So then we jump up and down because that's the definition of emotion. And then that's not dramatic enough because emotion's supposed to be a problem. But actually, emotion is the opposite. Emotion is the thing that feeds back very, very quickly to you for your physical body and your interface to the world to adjust radically, quickly, to compensate. So the person who says they're emotional are usually non-emotional. Mm -hmm. They are reactive. Mm -hmm. And so when you get anybody throwing on, I'm stressed, I'm this, it's a really good cover up for, I'm stuffed to find out what's happening so I better make a noise. <laughs> And so we've got to increase our sensitivity when that happens. Mm -hmm. And if you're dealing with somebody who's in that mode, mm -hmm. just use the simplicity of sound. You know you can break them up by laughing straight away. Mm -hmm. You can break them up with the right music, but it's got to be music that switches switches. And, you know, when you take a photo and you say, cheese, if you overdo that, <laughs> blown you straight away. <laughs> yeah. And it'll shock the system back into order. So many simple things that we've always used, but haven't seen them. 
Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Are these subtle types of communication coming through performances now? I mean, I, I perform a lot, so it's like, oh, mm -hmm. can we bring that into... Uh, yeah. One of the things with the performing is to remember that you can put on any coat you like. As long as you understand that that coat has everything. So you decide you're going to be a runner. You actually put on the coat and you can run. You'll frighten hell out of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you must take on every part of it. And if you're a cranky so-and-so, that's going to happen to you. And you've got to take whole lot on because it's all it all comes to you as that and particularly with with uh, dramatic arts you bring in everything associated with whatever angle you're going to work on you don't get a half a package you get the whole lot so if you're going to be aligned you be careful because you got all those aspects including the power and therefore you need to take the precaution to make sure you're not going to bite someone's head off because we have that ability and it does exist in your field as soon as you take it on so that's why all the best actors feel it all first they actually go into the character and they feel it and they find all those areas that are going to affect their own body and they find a way around that those who don't end up getting caught up in the character and their life gets totally stuffed up so switching from one to the other is the same as walking on hot coals it's the interface. You determine it. It's your world, your interface. And so if you don't want to be burnt, just be aware of it. If you're not aware and you walk on hot coals, you'll get burnt. But if you're aware there's an interface between it that is not controlled by your foot, it's controlled by the fact that nothing can touch you. Then you'll be a good actor. Yes, David. Oh, dreaming, yes. You can actually put yourself into whatever band you like. And you put yourself above all that, you won't dream. If you bring yourself into the area where you want to experience all the parallel dimensions and the parallel wor worlds that you live in, just come down a fraction and you'll dream. And in that dream, there's nothing wrong with it. In that dream, sometimes you'll, go, you'll come up with a parallel world which does indicate very closely what's happening in your world. They're the ones where people predict and they can feel it and they know. Other ones will be in a transverse type world where parts of it cross over your world that's where you get lessons out of it but but the type of person you all are you don't need any lessons because you can just allow the whole lot to come to you but dreaming is part of this earth and it's part of the dimensions that, that we live in this earth and me we, we we don't just live this life. 
we live many. And they all come together to support this focal plane. So there are many people that can access real parallel lives and that's fun. But if you access a transverse life, it can disturb the hell out of you. Because it seems like it's got nothing to do with you and it's frightening. And when that happens, you just lift yourself onto the top of the cloud. Everything comes back into action. We all dream. They prove that. But we don't have to be connected to it. What is the difference between transverse and parallel? Exactly? Okay, a parallel world you're familiar with. Transverse world has got nothing to do with your logic and it can be freaky stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> and when you get a combination of transverse worlds you'll flip from one to the other totally illogical sometimes totally frightening and then totally elating and nothing means anything and you wake up and go <laughs> 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 Yeah. What was that? <laughs> uh, that sort of made me think of, um, you hear a lot of astrology is all about retrograde. And it seems like the planet's in retrograde like 90% of the time now or something. <laughs> 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 um, and it's almost like a transverse dream is, you know, and, and I was just wondering, I mean, I, I don't know how much I really take stocks in, in like, oh, well, if it's in retrograde, well, that makes sense why this something perceived bad happened or what do you what do you have to say with this whole like I know that energies are at work but it's tendencies so when you come into the world at a certain time you have tendencies towards various aspects of life but it's just like if you've got one leg shorter than the other you tend to limp. But you can walk on the gutter and you won't limp. So there are ways around the tendency. <laughs> and it's that much of a joke. <laughs> it's a great image. <laughs> so when we predict things, there is a tendency to go with the prediction if you have the tendency of being that way. <laughs> and so many predictions can be based on that, particularly if the person is stuck in their ways. I know I can see lots about people, but all I can say is, if you keep going in the direction you're going, without changing your mind, without breathing, this will happen. But we do breathe, and breathing changes everything. Breathing will change our consciousness in a second. So somebody only has to walk past you and clap their hands and your direction's changed. Because your breath will go, <laughs> and, you've, and you've changed your whole pattern. That's how flexible we are. And if you feel the energies now around, around your head, you can feel that we're all connected, and you can feel that it's quite gentle, but it's, it's got strength. And that's the energy of, of our combination and our love. And any one of you can put the hands up and you can actually move it. And you can feel it. Because we have decided that we'll be joined together. And if you want to do that, watch what happens to you. So see the magic that you can do. 
<coughs> you can lift someone's energy just by doing that. And you can lift things away from them because you're so connected. <laughs> and that's the magic. And you can push someone along, you can pull them back. You can hold them up, or you can put them off balance. Any time you want. But the honour within us says don't do that unless you're fooling around. Our whole nature is to fool around, so let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> but there has to be agreement, yes? The other party has no. <laughs> That's the magic. <laughs> You have a look at the number of times that you've had tricks played on you. Mm -hmm. The beings love it. They go, hmm, we'll send her this signal. And you turn around, you look back and everything's missing. <laughs> they hide things from you. That do all that sort of thing. That's life. That's the way we're supposed to be. And when we play with the energies, it's fun. Just imagine sitting on the sideline, watching the, the football, and holding someone back, pushing them forward, and that's what happens. That's what happens with the crowds. You'll see them. You'll see the energy. If you just sit back and watch it, as each team gets the ball, the energy changes, and they get pushed along or they get pushed back, and that's why a home team usually wins because of that influence and it's great fun to sit there and do the opposite <laughs> it, you've got no idea what it does to you <laughs> so that's the joy of the, of the gifts we have and it lightens everything up and when you lighten things up, magic happens. Just remember. What? <laughs> oh, yes, I forgot that. Ah, I'm, I'm forgetting things, see? <laughs> <laughs> there are a couple of things that, that really make a difference to your life. <laughs> we have... We have big thing about being happy <laughs> um, there's so many things that make us unhappy and we try to change things so we're happy it's actually rubbish we have our own happy switch it is ours it is a primary switch it's controlled by nothing except you so what do we do we blackmail ourselves and we blackmail everybody else. Turn the switch off. I'm not switching it on until I get what I want. <laughs> you did that to me, I'm unhappy. <laughs> and in any moment, you can just turn it back on. And you do. Or you turn around to someone who's giving you the horrors and you turn the happy switch off. <laughs> and you back, turn it back on. <laughs> So know that you can have that switch on all the time. And you can play with it. Yeah, but be aware that it's you. So it's your primary switch. It, nothing affects it. And the other one is your energy. There are so many things that touch you, that knock you around, that put you off balance, upset you. Someone touches you and you get all freaky about it. <laughs> It's just like a top, you know, you spin a top and away it goes and if you just touch it, it goes all over the place. Isn't that what people do? Anything that they don't like, they spin off and go crazy. If you have a motor in that top, it turns into a gyroscope and you can kick it over, it comes straight back up. It's always stable. So if you switch on 
your own personal engine. Nothing can knock you over. And I forgot to tell you all how powerful you are, but <laughs> you probably know a little bit about it. <coughs> but if you're not doing 20,000 things at once minimum, your engine's turned off. <laughs> totally turned off. And so that scanning that you can do, touching with everybody and touching with everything, 20,000 times in a second, makes you start to feel alive. And the way you make sure that happens is you turn on your internal engine and it actually spins. So to kick it over, you just imagine spinning your skirt or spinning your cape and it goes faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and, faster and, faster. and then all of a sudden you feel stable. You'll feel the energy of it <coughs> build up until it gets calm and it's running flat out. Nothing can tip you over, nothing can upset you. And your heart works properly. It will lead you into anything and you can walk through walls. And that is the truth. You can actually stand up and do it. Get outside and you spin it and you'll go, wow. And then you'll find your intelligence just goes choo, through the roof. And you think, oh, my brain's working better. <laughs> you are scanning everything and leaving nothing out. And in that state, you'll find that people will tell you that you've arrived at their place or they've seen you or you might appear in a photo and you say, no, I wasn't there. I was in a different state at the time. You were there. You will appear because your focus, your focus can move so fast that it will actually create your presence. So remember the gyroscope. Whenever there's any instability at all, just get out there and switch that engine on. And you can light up a city. You have that much power. And you've all been through the times when you're totally charged. You can take yourself to the point when no one can touch you because you'll electrocute them. And I've been there. Sometimes happens with Barbara, doesn't it? I get zapped. <laughs> <laughs> The witch? <laughs> you say it loud? Yeah. I don't know what David has our time. Oh, go and say it. <laughs> We're fine. Yeah. Are you willing to share more about your role with uh, Simeon here tonight? Yeah. Okay. okay. Every day I, I, I actually do what most of you do and I channel somebody, right? It's a little bit different to everybody else because it's like my twin. And you know with twins, one can finish the statement of the other. They're along the same line all the time. And what comes to one comes to the other. And this is what happens with me, with a being that's uh, over a long period revealed himself as Simeon, spelled S-I-M-M-I-O-N. He's also a character in this book. Simeon <laughs> keeps the energy flow to me that allows me to be here. He also works with me to move through the changes in the universe and in the earth and every day I sit and get a message and just speak and I really don't know what I've said but I'm not in a trance or anything I'm just sitting here talking 
and in that flow I'm able to get anything from anywhere that I need including any information from anywhere because Simeon will channel whatever I need so I don't have any problems with interference <clears throat> what happens is he developed the the feedback that I was talking about when I I look around everyone and it took a quite some time for me to get used to it but he developed it so that through my eyes he could see what your needs were and it was fairly intense to start with but now it's quite easy as you all move forward we are able to provide for you a link to where you to where your origin crosses the field that you're in at the moment and in doing that we're able to open many of the paths that have been blocked through your communication channels in the past and when I talk about communication channels I mean the channels throughout your body that are hidden to normal science but are clear to you as this energy is delivered there are many cases where the flow has been restricted and after this transmission that flow will be returned we have worked with every one of you separately through many different <coughs> paths and many different channels but it's now time for your individuality to be registered very very clearly within your own knowing the fact that you're all sitting together and requesting a connection not knowing what it is but desiring it anyway shows that it is, that it is time for us to deliver and as the energies come through to you, you will feel a change in your senses, a change in the ability to be part of the physical world. The physical world is becoming the same world as the one where I reside because we have bridged all time and all space within your physical body and as we increase the flow of energies we will introduce new and more complex <coughs> combinations that result in simplicity that you can feel in your nature that simplicity 
is one <coughs> that is vast. and extensive, one that you have never attempted to bring into your world. That simplicity allows you to bridge the gap of the universe. And it allows the realization of where you are supposed to be. In any one moment, we are changing many of the cells within your brain to satisfy it and to allow it to be settled to allow it to rest with the knowing of the rest of your body and the universal sense of clarity will bring to your mind an ability to detect the right in everything. The brain will be converted to enable it to work through life without struggle, to enable it to integrate with everything you know. And as we send the possibility of that conversion into your being, you will notice a change in the calmness of your being. The physical effect in your head will be felt for a short time. And it will indicate to you that there is a change occurring. In your heart will be planted a seed that will grow to enable you to feel the true essence of who you are and to demonstrate to yourself the enormity of your being. As you feel that seed grow, the change in your brain will mellow your body and the true balance between heart and mind is now complete. Thank you, Jean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was a good flow. I can yeah. feel it. Yeah. Thanks for that. It's 
It's great. It's a privilege. Came out all right, did it? Good. <laughs> I'll find out what it's all about later. <laughs> Where, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Me? Yeah. I was here. But not, not fully here. Um, that's a that's a good question. I I don't know. I know that I I focus in small in small bandwidth, and it's like it's like reading a book through a little slot. But I don't focus on anything except the flow, and I hold steady. So that whatever's got to happen happens through my eyes, and um, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Most of these things happen because there are <coughs> openings for each one of you to your source, and the fact that I can sort of, I don't know, open that tube that goes through there, particularly through Simeon, um, you get the communication that you need. And I have a feeling that there was quite a bit done then. <laughs> you what? Oh, great. What was wrong with it? Wherever. Yeah. yeah. That's excellent. Ah, yes. Uh, he told us he'd be working on our brain cells and rearranging things in our brains, and we'd be feeling an after effect of that within our head and I have a bit of a headache right now. Yes. <laughs> Anyone else have that oh, headache? Um, <laughs> your bladder can tell you what to do with your so, headache. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a flowering actually. <coughs> Things in fiction for a reason. Because those with really active imaginations, you know, where do they get it? <laughs> we weave all of it out of our own bodies. So. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Put on your seatbelts. <laughs> so if the pressure gets too much in your head, yeah. just put it to the outside. That's it. Put it to the outside? Outside of your skull. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Let it explode. Yeah. And I'd like to say something that I left out in my little story, and that was... We got back to Australia on November 4th, after the October trip. And on November 30th, we were having a beautiful candlelit dinner on the terrace. And Robert said, I can barely get it out. It's time to go to America. That's where the people we love are. And that's where the people who love us are. And that's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit of what you're feeling. Yeah. <laughs>